Are you feeling any better now? Yes. I think the Dendro Archon made a really good point. I need to stop dwelling on my wife like this and move on with my life. Now that I think about it, my wife and I always meet at a familiar place in my dreams. I know where that place exists in reality, but it's a bit far and dangerous. I don't dare to go there on my own. Okay, why do this turn now into an NPC quest? Again, game. Can you really not write a story focusing on the set characters? I guess the NPC can have some value to see the perspectives of the character, but I don't know why, but consider that that's more two or the three times that this happens. Why do we even bother to cover this as character story? But at the same time, I feel as if I should go and have a look anyway. Perhaps I'll be able to move on once I see that there's nothing there. Otherwise, I'll keep on feeling like everything is covered in a haze. Like I'm only half awake. Once I can stop dreaming about that place, I'll probably be able to get my life back together. Actually, you two are adventurers, right? If it's okay with you, could you escort me to that place? Yeah, it might also be a good chance for us to unwind. Even if you can't see your wife there, taking in some nice scenery will definitely help cheer you up. Yeah, I hope so too. Alright, go ahead and get yourself ready then. Wait, you really gonna tell her about this? I'm actually surprised... I'm not be surprised if you're actually gonna tell her about this. Maybe in this story or maybe later. <clears throat> Are you headed off to some interesting place without telling me again? Huh? Wait! Aren't you supposed to be answering questions? I just finished, and they really got a lot out of it. So many interesting and novel thoughts. Anyway, it looks like you're going somewhere. Why don't you take me with you? Oh, there's no need to trouble you, Great Dendro Archon. I imagine you must have many other important things to deal with. No need to stand on ceremony. Besides, I wouldn't have asked to come along if I didn't have a good reason. I wanted to use this opportunity to discuss with you some things that are puzzling me right now. Huh. I didn't know the great Dendro Archon could become puzzled, too. <laughs> I'm not all that different from you, you know. All right, let's go. We can talk on the way. Ah, it's always nice to go for a leisurely stroll. Huh. Do adventurers often go to places like this? Huh. I guess so. So, this is where you always meet your wife in your dreams? Yes, for the most part. Our place is on the summit, just up ahead. When I saw her in my dreams, we didn't do anything but talk about ordinary, mundane topics. I'd tell her about our daughter, Hydar, and she always listened intently. She would also reminisce about the past with me, telling me interesting stories and cracking jokes. It feels like no matter how long we may chat, it's never enough. Sometimes, it's the little things in life that matter the most. This is the part I'm a little puzzled about. I am very familiar with dreams, and normally, they lack logic and continuity. What is this? Why is this upside down? But you said she could remember what you had told her before, right? That's right. She always listened to me carefully in real life, and now, she's doing the same in my dreams. 
She always surprises me with some details from our lives in the real world. The fact that she can remember such things makes me feel like she's alive. Whoa. That's pretty weird. Well, dreams are kind of weird to begin with. However, the problem is that his dreams have too much structure and continuity. Most dreams are far more fragile than you can imagine. For example, a loud noise outside your window in the real world could cause your dream self to get loaded into and fired out of a big cannon. Another example. If you're thirsty in the real world, then you might find yourself trudging through a desert in your dream. But the appearance of your wife seems unusually stable and unaffected by any outside interference. Statistically, this should be extremely rare. I don't understand it either. But I have no reason to suspect or reject these dreams. They're too beautiful. But I still want to figure out the how and the why. These kind of dreams are novel to me as well. That's why I want to have a look at the scene your dreams have been taking place at. Let's go. Just think of it as a nice little hike to the top of the mountain. Well, he really wasn't kidding. This place definitely isn't safe. No matter. We'll just finish them quickly. Huh? Are you going to fight too, Nahida? Of course. This is all part of our little trip. Everyone hold hands. Yeah. Here is the gun. Through me, justice is served. When I over kill you again. about this place. I do not plan to deny the power of longing. Such an intense but unquantifiable emotion could indeed have the power to organize dreams. His wife must be a really amazing person. Huh? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, so you are waiting for me here? Well, guess what? I've brought someone amazing with me today. What's happening? When Dendro Archon said she wanted to come with me. I could hardly believe it. I'll bring Hydar once I'm more familiar with the way here. She's been telling me that she really misses you. Huh? What's wrong with him? There's nobody there. Wait, Minar. Don't go that way. It's dangerous. Uh oh, he's gonna fall. Catch him. Whew. Luckily, he didn't fall. But what was all that rambling about? He also looks like he's passed out. He's in the dream now. What he said just now matches almost perfectly with the dreams he described to us earlier. Oh, so. He fell asleep and started to have the same dream? I find it a little strange as well, but we mustn't awaken someone while they're sleepwalking. All we can do is sit here and wait. I think I once look up out of curiosity because I think even Mispad uh, kind of did this, but they could uh, make it uh, official or something. But I guess you can just wake them normally and nothing is gonna happen. At the very base, they're just gonna wake up very surprised or suck. Uh, huh? Minar. Where's Minar? Oh, good! You're finally awake! Uh, what happened? Huh? Sleepwalking? 
Oh, right. It was all just a dream. The moment I reached the summit, I saw my wife, Minar, sitting there and walked over to her. After I introduced her to you, she seemed a little flustered and started walking away. I told her to stop because of the cliff, and then she seemed to suddenly disappear. A strong wind started to blow around me and the sky grew dark. When I realized something wasn't right, I woke up. That sounds pretty wild. Maybe you were just too tired. I don't think so. I slept a lot yesterday, and I don't feel very sleepy now. Maybe we've affected the way his subconscious constructs dreams by following him here. Anyway, all that matters is that you woke up safe and sound. I think I know what happened now. I'm sorry. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen. Let's head back now. Don't come back to this place again for the time being. Oh, uh, okay. Nahida, what's on your mind? Paimon's a little worried now. We still don't have enough evidence to work off of, so it's hard to draw any reliable conclusions yet. But I'm concerned that Ilmon's case may not be unique to him. Oh, right! Come to think of it, there were lots of people from the event who had vivid memories of their dreams. Right. And not only at a moment of dreams, there may be people like this all across Sumeru. We need to understand what's happening and the rate of its development as soon as possible. Then there's no time to lose! Let's head back! Stop standing there, Ilmon! Let's go! Oh, you're back already! How'd it go? We have an emergency on our hands. Please notify everyone here that while they can continue to discuss their dreams, they mustn't try to visit or recreate the locations and scenes that they have been experiencing in them. What? Uh, uh, all right, if that's the wish of the great Dendro Archon. But could you at least tell me what happened? You all look so serious. I see. I never knew even a dream could be so dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be sure to notify all the event participants and inform the other staff members about what has happened. Using the event registration list, I should be able to contact more people that were interested in dreams and warn them about the situation. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Let me confirm if all of today's participants are still here. Atta has already left. It seemed that he was on his way to make a hammer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, wait a second. Where's Katya? Has anyone seen Katya? Has she already left? Oh, I, I think she already left. She said there was somewhere she wanted to go. Oh no. Did she want to look for the place from her dreams, too? Can you tell us where she went? Yes, she did briefly mention it. Somewhere near... Chatracom Cave. Alright, thank you. We'll go look for her. Please help us tell the others not to do anything reckless. Sure thing. <sighs> Who would have known things would have turned out like this? I will have order. Solidify. Ha, too easy. Hey. Let's sweeten the deal. Crumble. Condition as Ilmon earlier. 
Yes, but luckily she hasn't been injured or jolted awake yet. Let's carefully move her somewhere safer. See you tomorrow, Professor Aisha. <sighs> huh? What? Why am I back here again? Dreaming? But what about Professor Aisha? Oh, I see. It was all just a dream. Well, that makes sense. After all, it hasn't changed a single bit. Huh? What's it? Nearly 20 years, and it still hasn't bloomed. <sighs> Does it have something to do with your dream? Please, tell us what you mean. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm still feeling a little groggy. Please give me a moment here. <sighs> <sighs> Alright, where to start? Right, this plant. So, Professor Aisha gave me this plant just before she left. She was a good friend of my parents. In my first real tutor, she was also an outstanding Amorta researcher. In addition to her extraordinary academic talents, she was also skilled in combat and would accept lots of work from the Adventurers Guild. Oh, so you mean she's left on an adventure? Yes. When I was about ten years old, she told me that she must go look for the secrets of the Abyss. ...and that she would be gone for a long time. I grabbed hold of her and wouldn't let go. I didn't know what the Abyss was. I just knew that she was like family to me. She hugged me... ...and we cried for some time until I fell asleep. When I woke up... ...I was already back home. She still decided to leave... ...but had left behind a letter for me saying that... ...I was the person she cared for most in this world. She claimed that investigating the Abyss could help more ordinary people protect the people and things they care about. She had obtained some important evidence during her past adventures. If she didn't set off right away, she might miss the perfect opportunity. Guess Ad Astra Abyssosk isn't just a slogan. She left a seed in the letter, telling me that if it sprouted and bloomed, then she'd come back no matter what sort of risky situation she was in. She said she looked forward to seeing me all grown up. But strangely, I've tried watering it, feeding it, everything I could think of. But I've never been able to get it to bloom. I even went to ask the Amorta researchers, and they couldn't explain it either. May I have a look at the plant? Of course. I was hoping the Great Dendro Archon could help me solve this problem. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, uh, oh. <sighs> huh? We've never seen that look on Nahida's face before. She looks a little unwell. Um, hold on, we'll be right back. What's wrong, Nita? You can't tell what's wrong with the plant either? No, I immediately understood what's happening with that plant. I'm just not sure if I should say it. This plant is not known to the academic world. It's a new species that her teacher managed to cultivate by some special means. Judging by its features, I can tell from the moment it sprouted, it'll never be able to bloom. It, it can't be! It means that this Professor Aisha she keeps mentioning might have foreseen the danger and was prepared to never return. From my experience observing people, she would undoubtedly regard this as a brutal revelation. When forced to confront such brutal truths, 
people may break down into tears, talk nonsense, or lose their tempers. I know she has to face the truth, but at the same time, I don't want to hurt her. Tell me, what should I do? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, seems like you've already got a good idea of the feelings she might experience. But wouldn't that mean I'm just pushing it all on you? What if she just gets angry at you instead? It's alright. There are all kinds of people, and the examples you observed are just the most extreme cases. Okay. Uh, thank you. Let's go back and tell her. Huh? It'll never bloom? But how is that possible? If a plant is unable to bloom, doesn't that mean it can't reproduce either? All that's left for it to do is slowly wither away. Are you saying she never intended to return? Seriously? So everything she said was a lie? But she meant well. Since the separation was inevitable, she hoped that you would be able to come to grips with such a cruel parting a little later in life. Yeah, her love, care, and attention to you, all those warm moments were real. I guess she had hoped that you could understand and respect her choice after learning the truth. I see. Sorry, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it's just... Just so much to take in. The dreams are so beautiful. Yet reality is heartlessly cold. I really thought she had come back. I had so much to tell her. These dreams may not be as pure and beautiful as they seem. Some kind of power may be exploiting your feelings. Huh. <sighs> really? Yes. So with that in mind, until our investigation is completed, please return to the event and ignore any further temptations from your dreams. I see. Thank you for rescuing me. And sorry for the trouble. Luckily, the plant didn't get hurt either. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything left to remember her by. Thanks, Traveler and Paimon. She seems to have finally accepted the truth, but I think she'll still need a long time to come to terms with her feelings. I saw her waver the moment you mentioned love. It was almost like a gentle ring, arriving just in time to put out a fire that was about to spread. It's because people have something called empathy. Empathy? Hmm, I see. This is valuable knowledge indeed. By the way, you said there may be something that's trying to exploit their feelings. Any idea what that might be? Yes. What's common between Ilmon and Katya's cases is that they've both lost someone dear to them. And now, they get to meet the people they cherish in their dreams again, and the people feel more real than anything a regular dream could hope to create. Instead of interpreting it as a result of their longing, I have to consider a more antagonistic explanation. Someone is taking advantage of their longing. Yeah. They're just causing these people to dream. What are they after? This is exactly what we need to investigate. Anyway, let's pay another visit to a moment of dreams. I have a bad feeling about all this. I hope things haven't gotten any worse. <laughs> <laughs>